Now, this is Huawei's biggest attempt yet to establish a premium tablet range. Let's not forget the company has made middling and entry-level tablets for quite a while. Years, in fact. Like its smartphones, though, the company has decided to elevate its tablet efforts at a time when everything is either an iPad or a Windows 10 2-in-1. And you know what? Hardware-wise, Huawei may have completely nailed it. The name might already sound familiar. That's because Huawei actually unveiled this device for China around the end of 2019, but with no news of taking it global. Now it's apparently ready to do so with a 5G iteration. For now, let me get back to cooing over the hardware. The MatePad Pro is a 10.8-inch tablet that, if it hasn't changed much from its Chinese iteration, weighs around 460 grams, like the similarly sized iPad Pro. It's got a gorgeous magnesium alloy frame with curved corners, and while I only saw the more standard colors, dark blue and white, in person, they're both stylish premium tablets. There will also be a dark forest green and afterglow orange options too, both with vegan leather back panels. Now, since the iPhone 11, I've been drawn to gadgets with a green hue, so I'm pretty excited, even if vegan leather also translates in my brain to a leatherette. The MatePad Pro's cellular and Wi-Fi antenna are all molded directly to that tablet frame, meaning there's no visible antenna lines. There's also an 8 megapixel hole punch camera on the front for conference calls more than selfies, I hope, and that's mirrored location-wise by a rear-facing 13 megapixel camera. With a 90% screen-to-body ratio, the MatePad Pro has a very thin bezel around the screen, apparently 49 millimeters. That's far smaller than the iPad Pro's border, which measures over 80 mil. Now, I'm not sure I care too much about that, but there's certainly some engineering bragging rights there, and if I haven't said it enough already, it helps elevate the looks of this thing, iPad baiting aside. The screen itself is vivid and bright, up to 540 nits, with a 2560 by 1600 resolution, high enough to split up tasks and apps on screen without making things tiny or blurry. More on that later. There's a 7250 milliamp battery inside the tablet, but the most interesting spec centers around the size and kinds of charging that this tablet can handle. Fast charging this time around can take in up to 40 watts, while Huawei has really amped up wireless charging, up to 27 watts if you have the appropriate wireless charger. The tablet itself is a wireless charger too, able to reverse charge compatible phones at 7.5 watts. Now that's typically what you get from most plug-in wireless chargers and is pretty impressive. Because it's a flat 10.8 inch tablet, it makes for a far more viable reverse charging surface than a phone of similar size. It's a smarter place to include this technology and you might actually use it more often than you do on your Samsung or Huawei phone. Other things you might want to slap onto the MatePad Pro, how about a companion keyboard folio sold separately or perhaps the M Pen stylus also sold separately. First the folio which feels like the iPad Pro's iteration and that's a good thing. I'll withhold judgment on how well extended typing sessions might feel, but early impressions are good. It passively powers itself from the tab and feels suitably premium too. I'd say the M Pen is more interesting, however. The peripheral is definitely the arch nemesis of the Apple Pencil, but it has a cute hexagonal design, like a Stadler Pencil, which is cute. It magnetically attaches to the MatePad Pro and wirelessly charges itself too. 30 seconds of charge equates to 10 minutes of use, while you can expect 10 hours of scribbling on a full charge. Together, these accessories pitch the MatePad Pro as a more thought-out tablet, one aimed at productivity, whether that means typing words or sketching plans. It also makes it way more interesting than any tablet Huawei's made before. When it comes to the software, a new app multiplier feature is the standout idea, allowing you to run two versions of several core apps, including the web browser, in a landscape arrangement. The proportion of the screen dedicated to each app can be adjusted, though the whole feature was pretty buggy at this demo stage. Sometimes I had to close apps in order to get the arrangement of things I wanted. There's certainly a knack to it. If you're feeling particularly masochistic, you can even throw a floating third window for calculations or other functions, though oddly there's no floating notepad. That aside, it helps reinforce the multitasking pro vibe that Huawei is going for with this thing. Now, like Huawei's updated foldable, the Mate XS, the MatePad Pro packs the company's own Kirin 990 processor, which includes the modem needed for 5G connections. It means there's plenty of processing power too, even if, in these days of no Google Play, there isn't really much of note to push mobile devices to their limits. So about that app problem, the company says there are now over a thousand apps supported on its devices, but spokespeople wouldn't be drawn to announcing the whereabouts 